So, welcome back to another video on the bduggy.live channel. This isn't live, this is recorded. It's actually pre-recorded. <laughs> this conversation is actually gonna be about my first conference talk and sort of how it changed the, the trajectory of me becoming a junior to senior engineer, a uh, full-time engineer in San Francisco, to now being a developer advocate. And it really came down to one goal I had, um, which was giving my very first conference talk, which is what this talk is gonna be. This conversation came from a, a, an actual conversation I had while live streaming on Twitch. Uh, if you are interested, I do live stream every Tuesday and Friday. Uh, I'll have a link in the description below. If you found your way to this channel, uh, maybe because of the title or maybe because of some other videos, uh, I do ask that if you just hit that like button and even smash the Taco Bell if you could. Uh, I think what's even better if you actually drop a comment below as well uh, and tell us what you what you like or disliked about the, the content coming up. And my first conference talk actually was about React Native. And at the time, uh, I was really hyper-focused on um, web development and learning JavaScript. And at, the, at, the, at that time, it was actually Angular was the, the framework to, to know and learn. And it was roughly around 2015, 2016. Um, around 2015, I actually took a job in San Francisco uh, doing some full-time development at this company called Block. Block itself is a boot camp. Uh, Block, as an employee, gave me free, a free stipend to learn any program while working there. So because I already knew web, I ended up going with the iOS program. And the way the program works is that they, they match you one-to-one -one with a mentor. So while I was doing a full-time engineering job, I was actually going through the Block curriculum, learning how to be an iOS engineer. Um, so at that time, the only op option for doing iOS, uh, actually a few options, uh, was either do Objective-C and do it native within Xcode and do it the way that basically all the iOS documentation recommends. Or you could use like a Xamarin or a Cordova or uh, um, I think RubyMotion was another thing. There were a couple other things uh, that were around. I think actually there's still some stuff that's around. Like I think perhaps Ionic might've been around at that time, maybe just got start or was just getting started. But there were a couple different like sort of write JavaScript to make an app or write Ruby to make an, make an iOS app or Android app. And I was really interested in just learning how to do it the proper way. Uh, and actually just learn about that, that structure. Uh, one thing that I learned really quickly, Objective-C, um, does have types in it are very similar to what you would think of TypeScript today. And at that time, uh, I, I spent the effort to learn how to do Objective-C and was able to build my very first iOS app. Now, the app itself, it's still on GitHub. I think it's archived at this point, uh, but it built a note-taking app uh, to basically just take notes. That was it. And I called it Black Notes because I think um, the recommendation was called it Block Notes and I thought it'd be better to have it something unique that would be discoverable. So I called it Black Notes instead. Actually, why did I mention that? Oh, I mentioned that because that was my very first time learning Objective-C. It actually took me a lot of effort to understand what was going on. The beauty of that is Xcode kind of helps you out a lot. It gives you that IntelliSense, like right out of the box. Uh, and I don't think they actually call it the same thing at the box, but this talk is not about IDs and that experience. I just wanted to sort of set the tone that I did spend a little time learning Objective-C and right after I, I built my first uh, Objective-C app, Apple announced Swift uh, at their their actual uh, WWDC, uh, which is the, the summer developer conference. It's focused around this engaging developer talent and teaching them the cutting edge of whatever they're trying to sort of ship. And at that time it was Swift and Swift is a brand new language uh, and Ironically, it looked a lot like TypeScript. Um, and I didn't know this at the time. Also, I don't think TypeScript was heavily used um, outside of Microsoft at that time either. Um, but I mentioned it because I, my, my experience in JavaScript at that point in 2015, 2016 was CoffeeScript. So I didn't really know how to write JavaScript properly at all. So I didn't have that correlation to be, be able to say like, oh, this kind of looks like JavaScript. It did kind of look like JavaScript. and because of that reason, I was like, oh, I should build a Swift app. So I proceeded to actually building an app in Swift, uh, mainly by the sort of uh, recommendation from my mentor to try it out. Uh, so I ended up learning Swift uh, as everybody else was learning it at the same time. Sort of nice having the, the level playing field of being at their cutting edge, the earlier sort of adoption period 
uh, is very beneficial uh, to, it was beneficial to my career. It'd be beneficial to your career um, if you're interested in learning how to code today um, to leverage something like JavaScript, maybe use TypeScript if you're, if you're willing. Uh, but trying something new while everybody else is learning it, it gives you to sort of gives you a point where you sort of get to onboard along with everybody else. This conversation was really not supposed to be about all this other stuff. I was really trying to focus on my first talk, um, but I had to set the stage because as soon as I learned Swift and got competent enough, and mind you, this program was about nine months long, um, so I was actually had a mentor for nine months learning how to do iOS. Uh, so I had a lot of time to sort of figure out all this stuff and have someone that can ask all the questions I wanted to. Within about a couple months after Swift was launched, um, something big happened and it was around, uh, it wasn't actually, the, it wasn't React Conf, but it, I think it was F8, I believe, um, that conference, uh, which happens shortly after WWDC and it's a Facebook developer conference. Uh, and they announced React Native, React Native being Similar to like what I mentioned before, Cordova, Xamarin, where you you wrote JavaScript and it compiled into Objective C code. Yeah, so one of the uh, the original core members of the React Native team that built that compiler is actually the same person who's running Repl.it. Repl.it being the um, platform to have a Repl directly in the all these products, all these languages, all these experiences sort of rolled up into the pinnacle point of I got to the point where I just learned a couple things, a couple new things. And at that time, if I zoom back a little bit, like I mentioned, I was doing CofferScript, I was learning Angular at the same time as well. And I was just kind of learning front-end development at the same time, migrating from only doing Ruby on the back end and building out APIs and integrating, you know, yeah, basically integrating APIs at the front end. Uh, I was migrating myself into trying to understand how CSS properly worked uh, without a bunch of you know, post compilers and stuff like that or preprocessors. And I was trying to get to a, a better understanding just around the web in general. Uh, prior to that, I spent an entire 10 months working at a company called Isaiah. I should probably stop name dropping all these companies, but anyway. So I was just working as a full stack, quote unquote, full stack developer in Orlando prior to moving out to San Francisco. And my focus there was really just write a bunch of Ruby code or Ruby on Rails code uh, and make the app work and then move on to the next feature. And part of the, my, the excitement of moving to San Francisco is that I could learn cutting edge stuff. I can actually be involved in the community, uh, which I found out the community is pretty massive. So it's like, it doesn't really feel like much of a community. The community really is on Twitter. You should get on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, BWO. Uh, I sell this because I was learning a bunch of stuff. Uh, I never felt like I knew enough to give a talk or write a blog post, even though I was writing lots of blog posts, I was writing them really for myself. What I'm getting at is my goal was to give a conference talk. Uh, Cause I felt like I, I wrote enough content and a couple blog posts around what I was learning around React Native, Objective-C and Swift. I also was writing a lot, uh, a bit of content around just learning JavaScript um, properly. Cause at that time we were considering moving from CoffeeScript to ES6, ES6 being the sort of the current standard of JavaScript today. And at that time, tools like Webpack and, and Babel also came out. And Babel being like the six to five was what they were originally called. It would just take ES6 and compile it in the ES5 so that way Chrome could read it. The idea of writing JavaScript code to compile on the web and the latest version that will just, it just magically compile into the, whatever the current standard is. It then translated into write JavaScript code that will compile into Objective C code. I go into way more detail about this in my conference talk. I, I highly recommend check that out. Uh, it's not a great conference talk. It literally is my first conference talk. Um, and if there were if there were things that I could I could have done uh, differently, I would have. And I think as soon as I gave the talk, I knew exactly what I would do different. Uh, which is mainly the intro. If you just skip the first three minutes, uh, just jump right in. I, I, I accepted critiques and advice to keep that in. And I, I still look back and say, I would, I wish I'd actually just cut that first three minutes out. But unfortunately I can't because I don't own the rights to the video. That was my first talk. And what I wanted to actually cover real quickly is the idea around conference driven development. And it's something that I've sort of like perfected 
Uh, and I would say perfected is like probably a really strong word. What I really did is I, I sort of built a model around this. And if you watched my last video around how to craft your per perfect pitch, it's actually the same thing, uh, where I actually provided a structure to the way I was learning. So one thing I didn't mention is that conference talk, I actually submitted that conference talk without actually writing an entire line of React Native. Uh, at, the, at that point, I wrote Objective-C, I wrote Swift, but I had not written React Native. Um, honestly, I actually had never written any React code as well. So the first thing actually I learned uh, in the React ecosystem was React Native. Uh, that was my introduction to React. The way I, I approached that is because I was, I knew Swift and my mentor had told me to, to learn it, um, he then saw React Native and he said, you should learn React Native. Uh, because he knew I was confident and I was already working as a full-time engineer during the day, and I could pick up things pretty quickly. I was, I was basically, I had the aptitude to show that I was able to, to learn things. He said, learn React Native, you might as well. Uh, so I was like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. At that time, I barely knew Angular well enough to like fix minute bugs or um, interesting errors or even writing tests. Writing tests was painful back in the day and that was only five years ago. Yeah, I, I, saw, the, I saw a conference, they had the open CFP, I saw on Twitter. Uh, this open CFP actually opened up six months in advance. So it was right at the beginning. And because I had this goal of giving my first conference talk, I submitted my conference talk. I basically just wrote it out and said, should I bother learning Swift? That was my title. And that was a talk. And I, I used the structure of the SCQA. So if you don't remember, <laughs> or if you didn't see the last video, definitely check out that video. Uh, but also it's situation, complication, question, answer. So I just basically wrote out the situation. It was like, hey, React Native just came out. And the complication is if you're already no JavaScript or if you're already a web developer, the interest is, hey, I should learn Swift because Swift kind of looks like JavaScript. The question is, well, should I even learn Swift if React Native is literally just JavaScript? Like, why would I waste my time learning a whole nother language in a whole nother ecosystem when I can just write all my stuff in JavaScript? So that was the premise and the hypothesis I, I actually approached and the I submitted in August by the end of August I was accepted as a conference speaker for the first time I then moved into a couple months of learning react native on my own and sort of figure out iOS development because I, I was actually learning a lot more iOS at that point because I would I already got to the point where I did built the trivial node app and then I got to a messenger client where I wanted to build a messenger app using React Native. I was learning after my talk was accepted. So since that point, every most talks I've given and have gotten accepted, I always float the idea of something. And if it gets accepted, I end up writing the code for it or I write the project for it. And that's been hands down if you look at any talk I've done, including a talk I just did two weeks ago, which was about persisted GraphQL queries. Now, I did already have the code for that talk done, but I didn't really know anything about that code. Uh, I ended up inheriting a bunch of code from a template, which I do a ton. You'll probably see this as a sort of a theme that I do, is I usually just grab a template and then I manipulate the template to see if it works for me. And if it does work, I start de either deleting code or I'll rebuild the same thing with parts of that template into a new repo. I'm a stack overflow copy and paste developer. Like that's my, my bread and butter, that's how I get stuff done really quickly. I bring this up because I think you could do this too. And I think the goal, if you wanna give a conference talk, it's gonna be different. It, it probably is gonna be from the comfort of your, your either your bedroom or your, your home office. But uh, if you're looking to level up, if you're looking to grow your career, submit a conference talk. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I'm happy to sort of fill out ideas and I just want to point out that like I've been doing this for the past four and a half, five years now uh, in 2017 alone. So literally only only nine, uh, about 18 months after my first conference talk, I'd given 40 conference talks, meetups and workshops just from using this model. And uh, I look forward to sharing more about these insights with you. I also want to just mention really quickly before I shut this off that I just started a newsletter, so subscribe.bduggy.live. 
uh, then this newsletter is going to be a lot more insight like this. Uh, hopefully I'll just be more uh, blunt and honest with you uh, with things that are happening in the, the modern web, where it's going, as well as my, my role as a developer advocate and how to sort of engage communities. So with that being said, uh, I'll see you on the web. Most people, it's like, you know, you submit a bunch of times and you don't get accepted and you figure it out and you might end up writing a talk and then submitting it. But I was able to submit a talk, get accepted with actually not having any code to support it and not have any code um, or have any examples to even talk about. So the entire time that six months, I was learning Swift and React Native uh, with the hopes that I could talk about it on stage. So then came like November came and I like had a couple examples built because I was just constantly working on this and building it to the point where I, that's what I gave a talk on.